So, Holly, let's get into the program. And we're going to go over, or going to talk about in segment one here, ornamental grasses. Yeah, so there's, um, I guess, two types of ornamental grasses. One is like a true ornamental grass, and then another one is like a shrub or a plant that has a grass-like appearance, like a like a sedge. Uh-huh. Um, and so you would use it for a similar purpose. So most grasses are perennials, so that's something to keep in mind. You can find... Um, Annual. Per- per- perennials, meaning they come back year after year with a little maintenance on your end. Right. Yeah. You can find annual grasses. People will often put those like in containers mm-hmm. or smaller grasses. So we're going to talk more about like the the permanent grasses. The easier ones. Right. Plant it and forget it to a certain degree. Right. Now, why would one may choose to put ornamental grasses on their property? Well, for one, you can use it as an ornamental Access, accent, accent piece. Making it pretty. Making it pretty. Mm-hmm. You can use it to create like a like a shrub sort of hedge. thing. Hedge. Like a hedge. Yeah. Like a, you know, like a, you do bun- plant a bunch of them next to each other. Okay. And then you have like a. A, a wall, a living wall. A wall. Yeah, a wall of grass. And, um, and, and now, you know, some people may be thinking, well, why would I just want tall grass when, I, you know, on my property? This is not necessarily just tall grass there is, they have specific and very unique characteristics they don't spread necessarily like you know grass or weeds do um they have a very aesthetic pleasing appearance when you put them on your property right and a lot of people like how because they're basically like thinner taller plants mm-hmm. you know when they blow in the wind or even just the rain or maybe a, a, a tiny little bird or it's pretty to watch the bugs on it whatever so a lot of times it's just um you know for for whatever there's not really like it's not going to improve something or something a lot of times it's just for the aesthetic right yeah so that's um that's why you would you would uh grow grow grass now there now most of these grasses that are available they can grow between three and basically eight nine feet tall and can be grown in growing zones, USDA growing zones, between about 3 and 10. So that really covers a very large gamut that maybe one doesn't work well for your area, but there's three or four other ones that would work well for your area. Right, and we found um, that there there is a variety of grasses that can be grown in those different zones. So, And most grasses are pretty forgiving, and that's another reason maybe why you would want to grow them, because they usually just require normal soil they require just rainwater for the most part unless you and a lot of them are drought tolerant Mm -hmm. um so unlike a shrub where there's a little more maintenance and potentially problems that could come up uh when you have a a bunch of shrubs on your property grasses pretty pretty easy right now there are ones that do spread Uh and so that's something to keep in mind that at some point you may have to Divide them. So Which that's, is it, it, not a bad thing. No. Because you're paying an upfront cost in order to purchase. These not, are not necessarily something that you're going to buy seed for and then start them in a grow cell and then take and transplant them outside. You're no, typically the buying these as a fairly decent sized plant. Right. Most of the time you're going to your local garden center and you're purchasing these, these uh, plants and then you're going to plant them where you want them. Right. And you should definitely do your research because if you find out that it's maybe like one square foot right now and it spreads to, I don't know, five, six square feet, whatever. Depending on where you plant that, uh, you may not have that space available. Right. So, and some people will even plant them in raised beds, which is, is, uh, is fun too because it does provide them really good drainage a lot of times. But it's not, you don't just have to put them directly into the ground. You do have some options where you could put them in a raised bed. Right. And with them... Uh, at some point, you have to. Some of these you're able to divide or hack in half and then hack again. So basically, you take one giant plant and you can divide it into four separate uh, root balls. You've expanded and you've really decreased the value or the, the amount of money you've spent on it. Let's say you spent, I don't know, I'm picking random numbers here, uh, $10, uh, $10 on a plant. Now you've divided that up. In four pieces, that ten dollars is really each plant has gotten a lot cheaper, and then over a course of time, it gets cheaper until you're basically looking at pennies every time you divide. Right, and then there are there are grasses for different areas. Right. There's full shade, uh, full sun, partial shade. 
you know, there's that too. So you don't, you're not limited to versatility. Yeah, you definitely have a lot of versatility. And a lot of times with most plants, if it's meant to be in partial shade, it'll, it'll grow in shade. It's just not going to grow as large or as prevalent. Or let's take a look at some. What are some uh, that we would recommend here? Uh, feather reed grass. That's well, one, a, one thing go, I want to touch on get is, that. is planting. So some of these, you depending where you're in the, you are in the country, mm-hmm. you could essentially plant them in the fall. Most people in the north plant them in the spring. A lot of times it'll recommend to divide them in the fall. Um, so you have to pay attention to what you're growing. Okay. So there, And then the maintenance. Yeah, the maintenance. Well, let's go over the maintenance uh, before we get into the types of varieties here. Yeah, so watering... Um, it, they just it kind of it kind of can vary by the species, but for the most part, again, it's like one inch of water per week, and then a lot of these varieties are now more drought tolerant as they become more hybridized um, <clears throat> when it comes to the the, the species. Uh, well, let's uh, when, let's talk about the trimming or the cutting back because you don't necessarily. It's best. It's recommended to at the end of the season cut it back, but. I guess if you don't cut it back, it can still be fine, but it helps if you do cut it back to get it to reset or reestablish for the next growing season. Right. You, yeah, you want to make sure that you cut back the grasses with, before the new season's growth starts, and that's good to keep in mind. Most of these grasses do not require fertilization, mm-hmm. um, and actually some, like too much nitrogen could cause problems. So you want to just... Use just a happy, healthy soil, and they're going to do their thing. And you want to cut the stems back just a few inches above ground level for the best appearance. Get rid of that old growth and trim it back with either uh, trimmers or <clears throat> secutures or whatever you have in order to make a clean cut, make it a buzz cut on it, and then you're good to go. Let it grow and the way it takes off. Yeah, for sure. And then most grasses, you know, you divide them about every three to four years. And if they're not divided, they will become thin. They'll die out. They'll kind of choke themselves Right, up. right. Exactly. That's what you got to be aware of. So there is some maintenance when it comes to that. We're just going to uh, ramble off a few varieties here uh, that we would maybe recommend for you. Uh, big blue stem uh, grows three to eight feet tall, and it's uh, narrow in clumps. And uh, <clears throat> the clumps are, you know, you can get the clumps can be four to eight feet apart or a feet tall with a large uh, powder blue foliage on them uh, zoned four to 10. So that covers almost everybody in our listing area. Um, but so this, but there's another variety of that that grows in three to nine. Okay. The red October. Yeah. Red October has narrow, deep green leaves with red uh, streaks in them. So it really, some people who are landscapers or want a specific, um, tint to their landscape foliage some of these may can you know relate to their their house color or you know their fence color whatever because it's got that tinge of blue or that tinge of red in this instance right so that's um that's something that you know to keep in mind is what what color you know might people might think that grasses are going to be like green green grass or that's yellow. all you get nope we got some different colors <laughs> yeah. here that you can choose from um so another one is side oats grandma um so this is a beautiful native grass and it'll grow in sandy to clean clay soils and that's zone four to nine it gets about two to three feet in there you go if you don't want something that's eight feet tall at two to three foot is really a good um, uh choice for you yeah and then there's also a blue gamma uh-huh um, it's called a mosquito grass, and okay, so the heads recommend or resemble mosquito larvae, which, which may not be something <laughs> you want to see, but that's and that zones three to nine, uh, one, so one, half to a foot in height. So that kind of would be something you maybe want to put around right close to the house, with that being one to two foot, uh, one half foot, two foot high, uh, yeah, and, and it's drought tolerant. Yeah, and you could put it with some other perennials that might be. Shorter or taller, and it's not gonna. It's not going to overpower them. Mm-hmm. And we got another one, uh, feather reed grass. Yeah. So this grass um, is two to four feet tall. It has tall flower heads in the spring that turn to golden tan in the summer. And that's another thing is that we have some grasses around here, and they do. It's nice to watch them go from 
well, dead looking in the right. spring to turning to green and then they turn to yellow. Kind of like leaves on a tree. Yeah, it's like leaves on a tree and you can kind of watch their their progression. So that's kind of fun. You might think, oh, grass is boring. I want the pretty flowering perennials and da 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 but it's, they can add also nice color. Also, the, the blowing in the, in the breeze. Yeah. It, to some people, it may be very calming and relaxing. I you find get, it calming. You get relaxing. lost in the, the moment, in, yeah. in the watching it. Some of that grass out there I planted. You you planted that mm-hmm. outside of the uh, the how come? Mm-hmm. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what other options may we have here? Um, switchgrass. Uh, you got a couple of different choices here. You got heavy metal. You got cloud nine. Um, the cloud nine, five to seven foot tall, growing zone five to nine. Uh, heavy metal, four to five foot tall, growing zone five to nine. Um, so that's a couple of different options you got there. I, I don't really know about this five to seven foot tall grass. Well, you're okay for people who don't know and who watch on the video, <laughs> you can't really tell heights, but you're just a niche over five foot. I'm five one. Okay. Yeah. On a good day. On a good day. So you could get lost in, in these. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, be aware of that. Just imagine me standing on the other side of the grass and you couldn't see me and then you wouldn't know where I was. Right. And now keep in mind, when we talk about these grasses, when you look for ornamental grasses for your property, don't take our word for it. Do your research for your particular growing area. And then in most areas, you would purchase these grasses in containers at your garden center, your independent garden center, in the spring, and then you bring them home and you plant them. Ask their advice. These people at your independent garden center, whether you're in Milwaukee, whether you're in in Yankton, whether you're in Boston, Kansas City, the people at the independent garden centers are hired because they have knowledge, not because they're fillers. They know to a certain degree what they're looking at and how to advise you on what to purchase. And if they don't, there's somebody on staff, there's a chain of command that they can get a hold of, whomever it is. These independent garden centers... Yes, they want you to buy their product, but they're not going to typically sell you something that, one, doesn't fit your requirements, and two, will not grow well for what your your needs are just to sell you a plant. That's just it. And you might go to the big box store and... Convenience, but it it doesn't... The convenience doesn't, you know, it's not, oh, great, you can save $3, but you probably got the plant, not the right plant. Well, right, and the guy who sold you paint last week is now selling the grasses, and you're going to say, hey, dude, what's this about? And he's like, that'll look nice in your uh-huh. yard. Yeah. yeah. That's that's about it. Yeah, and uh, so keep that in mind. And there's, and there's like, giant needle grass. That can go uh, growing zone 6 to 10 and get 5 to 6 feet tall. It's a arching and airy golden dandelion flower-like uh, in, in early and midsummer color to it. Uh, looks really nice. So. There's many, many different sea oats oats is uh, 7 to 11 growing zone. Right. Well, growing zone 6 to 10 is not for us, but you know what is for us? What is for us, And for everybody? Uh Uh-huh. Walton's. Okay. Walton's Inc. They have, they our radio show is brought to you today by Walton's Inc. We know you care about where your food comes from. You might can, you preserve your fruits and vegetables. But what about the meat? At waltonsinc.com, you can get all the equipment, seasoning and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way. And you might think, I don't eat meat or something. They I'm, not, also I'm, not, have, I'm not a hunter. I'm not a hunter. Yeah. I don't, maybe I don't process meat. Maybe I didn't go buy half a cow from right. somebody. But, but they, they got that covered. They got seasoning. And kitchen uh, utensils and supplies and thermometers and everything all, else. All sorts of stuff. So maybe you eat a lot of potatoes. They got a great potato seasoning. So you can find all that information at waltonsinc.com. They also have, if you want to make some snack sticks or jerky that actually tastes good, if you go to meatgistics.com, it's an informational site to help you make the best finished product. And they have all of this at meatgistics.com and waltonsinc.com. Um, sausage stuffers, mixers, everything but the meat. And for you to save a little extra of your hard-earned cash, they've got a coupon code available just for you, the listeners of the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Use coupon code GROW22, GROW22, at checkout to save 10% on your order of orders of over $50 And you also receive free shipping on that order. Hey there, gardeners. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. If you like what you've seen, 
You can search through the channel and find full in-studio videos of the entire show. If you want to go another route, you can search for it on your favorite podcast platform by searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show or the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show, and you can download it and take it with you. You can check out all past seasons at our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, under the radio tabs at the top of the page. We thank you for joining us. We hope you've learned and enjoyed the show, the segment, and we'll see you next time.